what we are going to discuss today is very important. So once you learn it, you will be able to like see many things in bioinstrumentation syllabus. Uh, it will really help you as a biomedical engineer. So this is going to be an active session. What I suggest is take a paper and a pen, and we are going to draw that bigger diagram. Are you all up for this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so the best way to learn is, you know, we can look at the figure, say, if I start describing this is going on there, this, you know, this is going on at this point, but I don't think you'll learn. Let's let's start from scratch. Let's start with the blank sheet of paper. Let's draw the bigger diagram. Draw it along with me. Let's see how much we learn in the process. Okay, and this is very relevant to, to gate. I'll try to show that, you know, once we... We are done with the Vigors diagram. Okay, so if you notice, uh, we came across heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, of course, this 120 by 80 mm HE, and uh, so many other details over here. If you are used to, you know, I have shown some couple of curves here on the screen, right? There are two ways to look at it. One is, you know, there, there is some red curve, there is some blue curve with some wiggles here and there and all that. Then, other way is, you look at a curve, you say what's going on in the heart. Similar thing is, in fact, what is going on in the heart with this aspect of the heart. For example, the electrical aspect, the pumping aspect, whatever it is, you can say that. And what you learn today, the way, the second approach that I want you to you know, show, you could apply it to pretty much all the signals in the human body. But let's get started with, you know, the heart. And as you see, the number of curves and the number of details are all pretty high. So let's, um, the best way to proceed, you know, when we are dealing with something complex is to Go very slow. There is no hurry. We already have all these curves. We just want to make sense out of it. And let's do it as slowly as possible. If the class picks up pace, I will also improve my tempo. Okay? So this, I want to deliberately make this, make the tempo a little slower. Uh, so can someone describe what's going on here? Sir, the movie is whiplash and the coach is shouting at the student for uh, going out of tempo or something. Okay, yeah. So, this particular student, in fact, has a out of tune uh, clarinet, I suppose. So, what happens is there is this big orchestra, they are practicing a particular song. And uh, he's a music teacher and he hears this one out of tune instrument in this orchestra and then tries to identify the student who, who has that out of tune instrument. The reason being that is something that really pisses off this mu music teacher. And uh, uh, how many of you have seen this movie? Uh, raise your hand. Okay, just one, okay, a couple of you have seen this. Uh, this is a very exhilarating movie. You feel, you feel your, your energy is pumped up after watching this movie. You know, if you want to, if you, I mean, if you get some time, I suggest you take a look at it. But I, the reason I brought this up is I have spent some time working with the heart and it always reminds me of uh, orchestra. It's a very well synchronized orchestra. There are so many musicians and all that. Then there is pretty much like a conductor trying to control all the musicians who are in the orchestra. And then when it works well, it's it's pretty much a symphony. But when it doesn't work, okay, there is usually this one out of tune player somewhere. Might be a drum, might might be beats, might be piano, might be clarinet. And if you are working with, if you are a biomedical engineer working with cardiologist, your task is to try to isolate that one out of tune player. So the different curves that we saw earlier are like different musicians in the, in the orchestra, okay? And the thing is, it 
problems in the heart usually starts with one person, one person in the orchestra. So there is one student in the class who, who is like uh, starting to create the trouble. In five, 10 minutes, the entire class is creating trouble. Like that. So problems in the heart starts with uh, one, one aspect of the heart, one, one physiological aspect of the heart, one defect in the heart. Over time, it usually affects other, other aspects of the heart as well as it starts affecting other aspects of the body. For example, heart will usually have a problem with the kidneys, with the lungs, with the, the entire body, you know, starting to feel tired and all that. Our mental capacity goes down. So one out of tune player, one aspect of heart gets worse. Many aspects of heart gets worse. Then the whole body, you know, starts getting worse. One of the important things here is to start identifying that out of tune player as early as possible. There are pretty much like hundreds of such players. Okay. With that, let's look at a couple of players in the heart. So this is going to be an active session. What is this? Just take a paper and a pen. And we are going to draw that bigger diagram. Are you all up for this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so the best way to learn is, you know, we can look at the figure, say, if I start describing this is going on there, this, you know, this is going on at this point, but I don't think you'll learn. Let's let's start from scratch. Let's start with the blank sheet of paper. Let's draw the bigger diagram. Draw it along with me. Let's see how much we learn in the process. Okay, and this is very relevant to, to gate. I'll try to show that, you know, once we... We are done with the Vigars diagram. And so we are do, going to do this from scratch. So I don't presume uh, anything. I'm going to add details and layers as we you know, add details in the Vigars diagram. So only, only you know, support that I have here is, is, a, is a schematic of a, you know, anatomy of a an heart. And the fonts are also labeled in, I think, uh, Latin, I suppose. You know, to keep that distraction away, I have chosen such a, such a thing. Okay. So, do you all have a paper and a pen? Can you get started? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So, slow, slow, slow. First thing, let's draw some axes and all that. And, you know, okay, this straight line is, I'm going to call it as time, okay? So time is along this direction. That's, that's a common thing. And the first question we need to answer is, what, which curve should we draw first? There are like five to six options, right? Which one should we draw first? ECG. ECG. Sorry? ECG. ECG. Okay. So why is that? Because that because forms like know. a base for every event in the cardiac cycle. Sure. So in fact, just like the sun forms for forms a base for all the activities in the world, the rhythmic activities in the world, day and night. There is a spot in the heart. Okay, that starts each and every beat. And uh, that spot shows up very well in ECG. Okay, so it's known as a sinoatrial node, it's somewhere over here. It initiates this cardiac activity, electrical activity to be more precise. And that's what, you know, gets this heart working again for another beat. So let's start with the ECG. And let's also, you know, draw two beats, not just draw one beat. If we don't follow details in a single beat, let's try to catch it up in the second beat. So I'm going to draw some axis here to mark the beats, start and end of the beats. So let's say the, your beat starts there, then we need pretty much in the midline, the beat stops. See, this is where the first beat happens. 
then almost the same length should be the same length okay the second beat so the first beat over here the second beat over here and let's start with the ecg so can some of you name the aspects of uh, features of an ecg like ecg has some standard annotations standard labels that go with it can someone pqrst qrs complex pqrst pqrst okay thanks so what happens is briefly uh let's look at you know uh, just the left side of the heart all this uh, deoxygenated blood gets filled up in the atrium the top chamber top left chamber is known as the atrium left atrium and if you are new to biology you know by convention in biology this is the left side this is the left side and this is the right side okay so this is the left atrium all this deoxygenated blood from all over the body they gather up here and oh, uh, sorry this is the left atrium right sorry all this oxygenated blood from the lungs they gather up over here okay so that that could be sent to the entire body through this path okay this is known as the aorta this is known as the left ventricle and so the activity the pumping starts with the top chambers the right and left are pretty much synchronous so it suffices to study just one of them in 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 normal hearts so let's look at that let's start with this left atrium fine what happens is this left atrium gets electrically activated so that shows a person you know signal in ecg so initially there is a small slight notch over there not a notch small curve over there which is known as the p wave and that is when this top chambers of the heart gets electrically activated depolarized clear or are you all drawing along with me yes sir okay yes, so once yes, sir. once once the uh, top chambers get activated there are very you know nice conduction systems with nice structures its own anatomy and all that that will help this electrical signal propagate from the top to the bottom so first the top chambers get activated the top two chambers pump okay and by the time blood reaches the bottom chambers which are known as the ventricles so this side it's a left ventricle this side it's a right ventricle by the time it reaches blood reaches the bottom chambers bottom chambers are supposed to pump blood so left ventricle is supposed to pump blood to the entire body this is supposed to pump blood to the lungs okay now so first we drew that you no know, this atrium is going to get excited that showed a signal known as p and you know we don't want this uh interference or desecrating inter interference when i am speaking or when a student is speaking we don't want another student speaking so such physiological aspects are inherent in a heart so when the atrium is pumping the bottom chambers when the top chambers are pumping the bottom chambers shouldn't pump when the top chambers are electrically activated the bottom chambers shouldn't be activated they should get activated after a delay okay so after the p gets activated after a small delay the bottom chambers start getting electrically activated so that shows up based on how you look at it okay i'll explain that in a minute so there is usually a notch that goes down then there is a high p then there is a drop things get back to zero and then there is usually an wave like this 
and then things are like appear to remain zero for some time so this is supposed to be zero okay and here we go back and start a new heartbeat did you all draw that yes sir great so yes. what is going on here is after this top chambers get activated which is a p signal the bottom chambers get activated because of that and what is happening is so when they get activated so this is membrane potential thing happening right charges go in and out of the cardiac cells so there is like net charge accumulation all over this heart one way to look at it is a dipole vector there is a charge distribution if you approximate it by one vector you will get one vector that will be pretty much processing in space in each heartbeat a simple approximation and if you look at the projection of that dipole vector charge distribution you get this ecg signal okay so to begin with there is no activity we don't get any signal suddenly there is a region that gets activated this dipole vector becomes non zero it starts showing up and then it's kind of like processes in a specific way in in, in say in 3d so we got this p and based on which how we project this vector we will get different ecgs so that's a limb ecg you know this just uh, uh, the ecg and all that based on how we look at this vector the ecg will uh, differ for now the standard ecg looks like this initially as this bottom chambers get excited we get this big you know this complex over here which is known as the q or and yes fine so this is a like a projection 1d projection of this uh, cardiac charge distribution dipole vector of the electric lactate so are you still with me till qrs yes sir yes okay. sir then what happens is all this depolarized cells get repolarized the charge distribution goes back to resting state okay because of that again this there is this change in charge distribution we get a signal here known as the t wave and this is depolarization of the ventricles this is repolarization of the ventricles fine so what is this p wave depolarization It, of the atrium okay repol uh, depolarization of the atrium where is repolarization of the atrium it's covered by the qrs complex yes so one of the details you could notice in this figure is that you know this atrium walls are very thin right compared to the left ventricle wall do you all notice that the left ventricle is somewhat thicker yes. compared to the right ventricle yes, all this atrium and all that can someone guess the reason for that for pumping because the ventricles need to pump the entire body so okay. they need more strength yes so usually the ventricles this left ventricle in particular needs to pump blood to the entire body it needs more strength there is too much resistance to flow in the entire body so it needs more strength so there is more you know muscular muscles muscular cells in this left ventricle atrium should just pump blood to you know this uh, chamber that's below it similarly with the right atrium uh, right ventricle needs to pump it to the lungs just the lungs not the entire body again so if you notice that is very thin okay so the reason to raise this issue of thickness of atrium and ventricles is because the total volume of this atrium is very very low compared to volume of this ventricles so any changes in the charge distribution in the atrium that will get muted by changes in the charge distribution in the ventricles which is why we don't see this repolarization of the atrium here it's like muddled in in between over here that's also the reason why p is small but this qrx is like the amplitude of that is pretty high fine so one have... doubt uh, yes, yeah yes. 
sir left side of the heart will have a more pressure as compared to right side is it true that is correct yeah sorry okay yeah yes. thank you okay sure in fact uh, we'll look at it when we go to the pressure curves okay so great so for right now we got the peak urst so for the next bit we again will have like uh, this thing okay bottom notch this q or s sorry okay we get this then there is like no activity for some time then there is this depolarization okay so we get this peak q or s great Do you all have it in your sheet? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now we have one curve. So we have this ECG. ECG. What is the next thing that we should draw? So let me. ECG. Which one? ECG. Phonocardiogram. Phone. Oh, ECG. Phonocardiogram. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that is the answer that I have. because then that answer will really start allowing us to make sense of you know non electrical activity in the heart so and that, that activity is also very very simple okay so what i am going to draw, draw next is this phonocardiogram so we have a lump dub in a heartbeat right what is this lump what is this dub can someone say that sir closing of the atrioventricular valve atrioventricular valve hold on hold on hold on and yes. the pulmonary i don't think we have a atrioventricular valve so closure of the semi lunar valve Again, okay. I am, I am coming across terms that are used. Okay, so if you if you say atrioventricular wall, that is ambiguous because the there are two atriums. And the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve, that is the mitral valve, and the aortic semilunar valve and the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay, thanks. So again, as I said, this the top chambers are synchronous with each other, and the bottom chambers are synchronous with each other. so this pretty much the walls here also open almost synchronously okay so the wall over here is known as the mitral wall the wall over here so this connection between the wall that guards this connection uh, path between atrium and left atrium left ventricle is known as a mitral wall and the wall that guards the path between left ventricle and the entire body is known as the aortic wall this vessel is known as aorta so this wall is aortic wall fine and for now of course uh, this is the this is a tricuspid wall and this is a pulmonary wall but let's keep the left atrium aside for the time being okay so the lump dub is due to this opening and closing of walls is that correct yes sir Yes, okay sir. that that statement needs a slight correction the the lump and dub or due to closing of the walls yeah so the lump and dub both are due to closing of the walls okay so when the mitral wall closes that is when we know the the blood from this top chamber goes to this bottom chamber yeah it fills 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 and then this mitral wall closes that's when we hear a dub lump in the heart signal okay so the atrium got excited right electrically activated that that made the atrium to to pump blood as it was pumping blood at some point it stopped because this wall here closed and that closing gives up some fine 
and that coincides with this close to the QRS complex. Fine. So this is known as lub, or also known as the first heart zone or the S one. Let's add few more, you know, temporal references to our diagram. I have a doubt, sir. Yes, please. Uh, so the way this picture is made, like the uh, dissection or the cross section of heart, is uh -huh. that exactly how the heart is placed inside the body? Like when we see it from the front, or uh, the left is basically towards the left shoulder of the person, yes. and right is towards the right of the person, and it and it's it just placed like this, like uh, yes, let, let's just say like zero degree to the axis, this is just right there. Yes. If 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 it is, then uh, when we do the process of osculation, that is like uh, measuring and hearing the sound of lub dub through a stethoscope. Why do we choose the points at different places? Because like if you're mentioning the mitral valve there, mm -hmm. the the process sort of goes differently. You you count your ribs, like for example, that I've learned it myself, and the, the positions are a bit different. Like when you try to listen to the yes. valve sound during the stethoscope. Why are the points chosen to listen to these noises different than um, on the heart? Uh -huh. So the thing is, uh, first thing, I mean, though gate questions are like, you know, the fifth intercostal space somewhere over here, uh, it's a mitral region and all that. It's not like you'll hear the lub only in this side. Uh, lub by definition is mitral wall closing. Does, does that, you know, make things clear? By definition, the lub sound of heart is mitral wall closing. Then... So let, let's add some, you know, start. The mitral wall closes pretty much over here, right? So this is MB close. And then as this MB closes, all this bottom chamber starts pumping. And they do pump blood through this aortic wall, through this aorta and all that. And after a certain time, the aorta also closes. This wall will also close, fine, because it, uh, the heart has to get ready for the next heartbeat. It's a cycle, right? So that closing of the wall happens. I mean, let me try to be somewhat precise about this. So that happens close to this, okay? So we have another temporal reference, okay? And let's. Redo the references in this figure. So close to the QRS complex, the mitral valve closes, we have the lub sound, and close to the, uh, you know, the, near the end of the T wave, we have this lub sound. So this is where we have the second sound over here, dub, known as S2. So the same thing goes on here and here. What happens at lub is mitral valve close, what happens at dubbers, aortic wall close. Fine. So there is this lub sound signal over here, dub sound signal over here. Similarly, you know, this side is good congested. There is this lub sound signal over here, and there is a dub sound signal over there. Cool. And lub is also known as S1, dub is also known as S2. First heart sound and second heart sound. Clear? And wherever the lubs and dubs happen, I, I have just like added some temporal references for the other curves that we are going to talk. Yes, sir. Okay, can we proceed proceed further? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So okay, again. So let's go back to what the heart does. So the mitral wall uh, closes and then this bottom chambers get excited and they start pumping the blood. As they start pumping the blood, the wall, that aortic wall that closed in the last bit, that opens up. Okay? So that will show up here. As soon as the mitral wall closes in some time, the aortic wall opens. Aortic wall opens. And then after pumping the blood, it closes. Fine. 
and then D. Similarly, in the next bead, we have the aortic wall opening over here and it closes over here. Fine. And where does a mitral wall close? Okay. Mitral wall open? Yeah, we'll take a look. Okay. Are, are you with me till like the aortic wall opening that I just added here? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Great. And then if you notice, once this aortic wall closes at this point, that is when, so aortic wall closes, this chamber is no more pumping blood. It actually needs to get filled up to start pumping blood for the subsequent beat, right? So in order for it to get filled up, this mitral wall opens up. And that shows up over, again, slightly after the aortic wall closing. So this is mitral wall open, right? Again, in the next cycle, of course, here we are going to have mitral, this wall that opened here is going to close here. Then we go on with this aortic wall opening, aortic wall closing, mitral wall opening. Questions are, are, we all, are you all with me? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. great. So we are like pretty much past the most difficult part of the, of the drawing because uh, establishing the temporal references is the, is the hardest part. But we have done that. And so now let's go on to the next thing. And I think next it would be easier to, you know, draw the, let me just draw anything. It's easy to draw the pressure curve because we are talking about this pumping and all that. So let's look at what happens to the pressures in the heart. Specifically, let's look at what happens to the pressure in the left ventricle. Okay, so let's draw that curve next. So I'm going to draw, now what do we need to draw? The pressures, then the volumes. We need to draw two more curves. Okay, so let me draw the volumes, you know, in this axis. This is for volumes, we need one more thing. We need the, okay, the pressures over here. Fine. So this is, in this axis, I'm going to draw the pressure. And uh, you know the pressure when the heart heart is filling, it's usually low. Okay, let's say let's say it's it's this value. It's close to. We have to give a value. It's close to you know less than ten mm hg. Yeah, approximately let's say five mm hg when it has filled. It is not excited. It's not starting to pump. The muscles are not getting active. At the time, it's like the pressure inside it is. Approximately 5 mm hg. In fact, you cannot even like see the pulse uh, at this level. Okay, so it's 5 mm hg. Let's say 5 mm hg is over here. And you know, so what is QRX? The bottom chamber is getting activated, right? So they are going to start pumping. The muscles get active. Fine. So that will make this pressure inside the heart rise, 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 rise. There is a steep rise because this aortic wall is closed. If you notice, mitral wall is closed between these two things. Aortic wall is also closed. Okay? Because the mitral wall is closed over here, aortic wall opens only after this point. So as the heart tries to pump, there is a steep rise in pressure over here. Fine? Yes. Uh, once there is a rise in pressure, the aortic wall opens up and then blood gets pumped to all over the body. And we have this, the steep rise, you know, subsudes for some time until the aortic wall closes. Once the aortic wall closes, once this wall closes over here, the chamber has pretty much pumped all the blood that it collected from the previous cycle. Okay. Now it's going to relax muscularly relaxed, okay? And that pretty much coincides with its electrical relaxation, right? And if you notice, can someone guess what this value is going to be? What is this like the peak pressure that we'll find here? 
120 mm mm slightly higher than 120 because 120 is for the aorta not for the heart chamber so if it is pumping into the aorta its pressure is going to be slightly higher aorta we, uh, we know the body you know it's like 120 mm so uh, this is slightly higher 125 130 like that at least like that okay so slightly greater than 120 mm hg is where we have this peak and then what happens okay uh, here is where you know the thing the bottom chamber this thing kind of okay so what happens at this point the mitral wall can someone say at this point the mitral wall opens right so this wall opens allowing blood to flow from atrium to the bottom chamber so the bottom chamber starts filling the pressure kind of like is relaxed like this in fact relaxed like this until relax 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 until the atrium get excited over here until the atrium starts you know pushing some blood into the bottom chamber so there is a steep rise and then we go on with the next cycle there is a steep, sorry, this is not a steep rise. This is like a mild rise due to the atrial pressure. Then there is a steep rise again and we are back with the, this point in the curve. So again, goes like this. I don't have this, then drops. Then it, it goes on like this, fine. So the heart is filling over here. The pressure is like very less inside the chamber. It's just getting filled up. And here there is a little push from the atrium. The atrium is active here, the P wave. So the top chamber is active. That will slightly increase the pressure, not by a lot, slight. Okay, there is a slight upward notch. Are you all drawing? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Great. And yes, are you all with me till now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's go to the next thing. Okay, then the next two curves are very uh, simple. So you know what happens to the aorta? Where do we, you know, before the aortic valve opens, what is the pressure in the aorta? Can someone say? So, you know, before this thing, uh, before this thing opens, what should be the pressure in this region? So, uh, the, uh, blood pressure is yeah, 120 by 80 mm, right? So, this point is close to 80 mm Hg, right? So, as what happens is until this point, the reason that valve opens and closes is because until this point in time, aorta will have a higher pressure. And then as the lower chamber pumps, aortic pressure will become lesser than heart's pressure. So aortic pressure will be higher, 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 close to 80 mm Hg. Then as this thing pumps, there will be a slight increase in pressure because now heart is pumping into the aorta, it's aorta's pressure will also increase. But in order to keep this valve open, pressure in the ch pumping chamber should be higher than where blood is flowing, which is the aorta. So it will be slightly less, it will go here, it will go here, and this peak will be actually 120 mm in normal hearts. And the heart's pressure is slightly higher than that, like five to 10 mm higher than that, okay? Then when the aortic valve closes, this pressure starts, aortic pressure starts getting higher than the heart's pressure. So it's slightly, there are some couple of wave reflections and all that, some small notches here and there. It relaxes back to 80 mm Hg till to this point, okay? This aortic curve is you know, somewhat distorted in the figure I have drawn. But you get the pattern, right? Before the valve opens, aortic pressure is higher. Once the aortic valve opens, heart's pressure is higher. And as heart's pressure increases because of the muscles pumping activity, aortic pressure also rises. Then it rises to 120 mmHg, goes back to 80 mmHg, fine? So this is more like there is a clear rise here until this point, and then things start popping. Clear? The aortic rise I haven't shown drawn very well here. Just refer to the figures, you know, to see that aortic pressure is rising over here. 
from 180 it goes to like 120. Fine? Yes, so, sir. So this curve that I have drawn here, so that the, the curve that goes above and below the heart's pressure is the aortic pressure, which is the blood pressure we measure. The peak of this is like a, Okay, let me come to that, but this is a blood pressure that we usually refer to when we say 120 by 80 mmHg. So this is the aortic pressure. Aortic pressure is pressure in this major blood vessel in the body, aorta. Great. Excuse me, thank you. Fine. So shall we go to the next curve? Yes, sir. Yes. And you know, the, the heart is actually uh, filling over here. There is a little atrial kick. So uh, the heart's pressure will be slight rise due to the atrial kick. And then there will be a relaxation over here. And uh, another pressure that shows up here is uh, right now the atrial pressures. Whatever you ask for the aorta, aortic valve, you can ask for the mitral valve. Why does the mitral valve close here? Because the atrial pressure drops. Let's say this is the atrial pressure. In this side, it's higher. Then it drops below this, you know, the heart's pressure. So the mitral valve closes. So at this point, when I start out, I'm starting to draw the atrial pressure. So this pressure, when that pressure goes below the heart's pressure, left chamber's pressure, left ventricle's pressure, it goes below the left ventricle pressure, the mitral valve closes. So essentially the pressure values determine whether the valves are open or closed. Simple. Uh, simple physiology. Whichever side the pressure is very high, the wall opens and closes accordingly. And in fact, it can open only on one side. That's why it's a wall. So, okay, it's higher here, then it's lower, lower, lower. There are some mild activities, as I said, as the ventricle is pumping, there will be some uh, effects seen in the aorta. We'll, we'll get to that. 5 to 10 mmHg in that range. Then, this is when the mitral valve opens. It opens because now this pressure becomes higher than the bottom chamber's pressure. It has pumped, the bottom chamber has pumped all the blood. It has like done its work for this cycle. Then as, as it relaxes, the, the atrial pressure starts getting higher. So we have this curve. Atrial pressure remains higher, 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 higher. When does it go below again? Can someone please answer? So it's higher, higher, higher. When does it go below again? At this point, what is this point? Mitral valve closure. Okay. When the when it goes below this uh, left chamber pressure due to left chamber's activity, that's when the mitral valve closes for the next cycle. Great. So this is just like there are some effects due to ventricles pumping. Then remains, 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 and then when the mitral valve opens, it becomes higher, and slightly. Remains higher to this pressure, higher, 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 goes to the next side. Clear? Yes. Yes, okay. yes sir. Yeah. The thing is, uh, in this software I am using, I cannot use different colors, which is why I am sticking to red. But uh, I mean, at least glad that you are all with me now. So the last curve, then we will wrap up this, this session, okay? Uh, Last is, okay, what happens to the, let's look at what happens to the volume of the heart. At the end of it, sure. we want to pump blood, right? What happens to the chamber size? The more change in chamber size, the more uh, blood it's pumping. Okay, there is a more decrease in chamber size, it has pumped more blood, it has done more work. So let's draw the diagram, which is, uh, let's say in this axis. Sir, if you uh, go to view options up, sir, uh -huh. uh, if you click there, then you'll get a lot of options. Sir, you can uh, annotate, sir. Click annotate and you can choose different colors, sir. Oh, is this annotate in, in Zoom? Yes, sir. Okay, let me try that. For some reason, when I tried it, initially I had some issues, so I did not try it. Let me try it. If there are issues, we'll get back with us. Okay, now see when these both the walls are closed, you know, the volume is pretty much going to remain a constant. Uh, let me slightly pick up pace at this point because we covered all the important aspects of 
this bigger sega the volume pretty much remains a constant and this is known as you know uh, the ventricle tries to pump but the walls are all closed it cannot really pump that's why the pressure builds up volume inside the ventricles remain a constant it's known as iso volumic contraction okay but once this aortic valve opens you know the volume drops right yeah once this aortic valve opens the volume drops 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 and then at some point the aortic valve closes the mitral valve is also still closed so it's like the volume remains a constant almost a constant for something this is known as iso volumic relaxation after which the mitral valve opens so once the mitral valve opens now uh, i cannot move this thing back and forth but okay this is where the mitral valve opens essentially here the heart has pumped the blood so heart chamber left ventricle has like contracted okay so its volume has decreased in fact let's say it decreased from 130 uh, ml to you know somewhere close to 80 ml okay uh, this short length of time it's going to remain a constant because the walls are closed again in the short amount of time it's going to remain a constant because the walls are closed and once the mitral valve opens starts filling up filling up filling up filling up uh, it, it fills up then kind of reaches a stagnation point because like it kind of fill then it get a little kick from the atrium so there is more uh, filling this is the, the atrium gets activated so that gives a additional pressure to for it to get filled up so there is this this atrial kick over here and then we we get back to where we started okay one 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 that am so in this side it's going to be like this okay so this is where the heart pumps remains a constant then heart starts filling so as the heart pumps left chamber pumps its volume decreases from say 130 ml to 180 ml 80 ml then it starts filling up in this region clear and then of course here uh, iso volumic then pumping and then i cannot proceed further because i have this window chat window over there but then it goes on have you all drawn this yes sir great so we pretty much drew all the curve over, over there so now let me really pick up pace because uh, at this point uh, let me just briefly hint you at all the details that uh, that we can now start inferring from once we have this nice diagram okay first thing uh, let me shift to the Sir, uh, yes. Uh, sir, like uh, the volumes which we are talking are about uh, entirely about ventricular volume, right? This yeah. not uh, atrial volume. We are not going to uh, yes take take into consideration. So it's yes. entirely about ventricular volume. Right? Yes. So uh, yeah. So the volume curve that I drew here, that's a nice question. Uh, is for the only for this left. ventricle the bottom chamber in the left which is pumping the blood to the whole heart and at the end of the day that is what primarily matters because the body needs gets blood from this pumping so this change in volume is of enormous interest others are also important but this is the first thing we look at clear okay sir. okay now couple of details here so the region where the heart pumps we don't take that the region where the heart pumps okay that's known as a systole where where the heart ventricles contract that's known as a systole and the region where the ventricles you know fill up that's known as a diastole ventricle diastole and uh, okay i was about to raise this point what we have been talking till now is what happens at this you know this is for the pressure at the left ventricle this is the volume at the left ventricle uh, this is the aortic pressure this is this left atrial pressure right atrial pressure again will be very small right ventricular pressure will almost look close to the left ventricular pressure but with a no lesser magnitude it will it will go close to perhaps like you no know, 40 or something and something like that if this thing went to 120 this will go to like perhaps 40 okay but it will almost mimic this uh, left ventricular pressure so now let's actually you know start start getting quantitative with this with this curve now okay can we can we 
Let's start with the basics. Can you find the heart rate from any of these signals? Yes. How do you do that? Uh, so the time between RR peaks. Okay. So the thing is, time between any two points, any similar points in consequent heartbeats will give us the heartbeat, heart, uh, the time of a beat from which you can calculate the heart rate. Okay. And uh, the most discernible point in a heartbeat is this tall peak in the ECG signal, this R point. Okay. So this tall peak in the uh, ECG, which is the R point. So from one R to the next R, okay, will give us the timing of a single heartbeat. So this is the RR distance, RR peak distance. That is one thing we can infer. Then we can infer something called as uh, cardiac output. So how much, how much volume does volume of blood does heart pump per minute? Please go for it. How much amount? How much Five volume liter. of blood? Five liters. Five liters. Okay. So let's try to get a you know quick estimate to see whether our figure makes sense quantitatively. Okay. So it's close to you know 5.5 liters. Uh, there is some gender difference over here. So close to 5.5 liters. Okay. So at each beat, this difference, difference between 130 ml and 80 ml is the amount of amount of volume that heart pumps in a volume of blood that heart, heart pumps in a single beat. Agree? It, it changes by this much amount from 130 to it yes. becomes like 80. So that's the amount of blood it pumps in a single beat. What is that? That is close to 50. Fine. Uh, this usual, you know, this RR distance, uh, if you look at 72 beats per minute, normal heart rate, so this will come close to 830 milliseconds. Eight thirty milliseconds. This distance between R and R peaks. So one beat it pumps fifty ml. So in a minute there are like seventy two, seventy two beats, right? Uh, so how much is this? Three thousand six hundred millimeter. Three thousand six hundred millimeters. So actually, the lower limit of uh, ventricular volume is 50 ml. It's 50 ml, is it? Yes. Let me, let me check the... Okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay, so the number I wrote down over here is correct. Whoever pointed it out, thanks a lot. So this value is like 50 ml. So can we redo the calculation at 50 ml? So each weight, there is like a 80 ml amount of blood that's being pumped. Okay, so what is this value? Okay. 560. Okay, and convert that into liters, what do you get? 5.6 liters. Okay, so close to this, the value that we know, right? Okay, whichever student pointed this, this mistake over here, really thank you. Uh, I was lost a bit. I wrote, wrote this down from memory. Okay, so this is 50 ml. So the amount of blood, you know, the heart pumps in each um, minute is like close to 5.5 liters. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. And that, that, who, who was it? Matangi, sir. Matangi, okay. Thanks for really helping me because I might have lost my you know, rhythm if, if, I was, if I started looking for where I went wrong. Thanks for it. Yes. Okay. All we did are like, fine. The only thing is, instead of 50, I wrote 80. Okay? So, this 80 ml, this difference between this and this is known as car, uh, stroke volume. Okay? And this total amount of blood that heart pumps each minute is known as cardiac output. And of course, we have the heart rate over here. And then we have this Sir, uh, 72, like, uh, can you explain once again, sir, how did 72? Which one? Okay, uh, so normal heart rate is like 72 beats per minute. So, one beat we get 80 ml. In, in a minute, there are 72 beats. So, for 72 beats, we get 80 times 72 ml. Fine? 
ஒன்ஸ்டர் you know as i as i did uh, when we when biomedical engineers doctors look at these figures they don't look at some curve they look at some some actual thing that's going on with the heart and uh, now the challenge is say one of this curves is you know slightly different gets abnormal and we want to identify that that is a problem that i mentioned you know when we started drawing this and getting used to the normal behavior is the first step to start looking at abnormal things abnormal features fine right? what we did is today is to look at the normal features of this heart's activity electrical mechanical electrical and mechanical activity and all of this is known as the wicker diagram no sir okay so all these things that we wrote down here this heart rate stroke volume cardiac outputs are like uh, likely gate questions they may not ask you from the bigger diagram but they can give you this volumes the stroke volume is 80 ml calculate the cardiac output that's a typical question they give you the heart rate okay a single beat takes 900 milliseconds what is the beats per minute that's a typical question and of course we know there are questions like uh, what is this uh, diastolic systolic pressure now we know what is systole we know what is a diastole so now we can actually make sense out of those terms right there was a question from uh, what is the mean atrial uh, mean arterial pressure given diastolic and systolic pressures remember which question i am referring to yes okay. sir yes sir and in addition to that now we know where the systole is where the diastole is where this aortic valve opens so because of that we know now where the aortic stenosis is then uh, we know where the again the mitral valve closes we know where the mitral regurgitation is so in subsequent classes if i tell you mitral regurgitation happens during systole you can like now we can see what is going on right there is this phono cardiogram cardiogram question in gate so now i tell you okay based on this location it's in during systole between lap and dub s1 and s2 so it's regurgitation we can start discussing those things which is the reason to draw this you no know, spend time drawing this is one diagram one final detail to notice here notice the systole is like usually one third of this diastole so systole length is like one third of the total cycle diastole length is like two thirds of the total heartbeat fine so we can usually that's one thing we can start start so this distance is like one third of 80 80 30 milliseconds this distance is like roughly 2 thirds of this 80 milliseconds okay with that i think we are done with uh, drawing we are done drawing the vigor diagram from scratch did you like the process did you learn things as we were drawing drawing it yes sir yes, yes sir yes sir okay yes, great sir. and this is something that you know usually uh, books youtube videos they will try to draw perhaps you know the ecg they will try to explain what what's going on with the pqrst uh, in the heart so we try to go one step further you know that's fine we try to see all of this information in one picture i think we did very well and i was kind of like wondering you know if it's possible to do that that's why i had some you know one at least one diagram saying uh, how to proceed and all that great i think we did a nice job we will use this diagram to you know refer to all the bio instrumentation questions there will be many questions from you know specific to the heart so we'll be referring to this diagram 